it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and today I am back with part three of the haul video saga story. So I was able to get everything on this table from one house that I was privately at. They contacted me and I walked through at my leisure while they were busy cleaning out the house. So I was able to buy things right off the shelves, right out of the cabinets for great prices. So. The first thing I'm going, oh, by the way, if you want to watch the other videos, they are all prior to this one. I will put a link in the description for the very first one where I'm actually in the house sourcing the items. Okay, first thing up is this awesome scale right here. So I had to grab this when I saw it and it is in great shape. It is a scale of justice. And as you can see here, it's in just wonderful shape. So. It works just as it should, and it has uh, this green coloring to it with the gold accenting. Very nice. The bottom does have a sticker label that says, let's see if I can read it, that says Marble Alabaster Onyx, Terenia, Italy. Okay, so that is very awesome. This is worth roughly between $50 and $100. That's about the, the, the fair market selling price of this. And I was able to verify that on WorthPoint to make sure. So that is a great pickup. And I spent $5. <laughs> that was fantastic. Wow, wow. So um, initially I was thinking it could be upwards of $30 to $40, but I was happy to find out it was worth more. So that's great. And this will definitely be going online for that price. Next up is this little elephant figurine. I had to grab it because it's adorable. And it was, if I can remember, this was, I don't know if this was in the cabinet or if this was on a shelf on the wall, but I had to grab it, of course. It is a very adorable elephant. And it is written on the bottom here, March 16th, 1964, on a stick, on a uh, little piece that I can remove. So that is very awesome. And it will, I don't know where it'll go, online or in the booth, but it's very cool. Keeping up with the elephant theme is this really lovely elephant glass with, we have flowers on the inside here. It's like a paperweight, you can put that in your windowsill. And it says, made in Taiwan, Republic of China. Just a really pretty elephant. And <coughs> in great shape. Stella, do you gotta go outside? Stella. Stella. No. 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 Okay, I also got this really nice set of elephants here. These are chained wood animal elephants. Look at the eyes. They are rhinestone. They are rhinestone eyes. And here are the little ones. Aren't those adorable? So let's see, these have blue eyes and then we have a, an elephant with pink and then an elephant with green eyes. So those are really cute and they're in great shape all together. Made in Hong Kong, Ross Products is a little foil sticker on the bottom. So those are really awesome. Love those. They are, I believe, made of wood. I'm not sure. I think they're made of wood, yeah. They just kind of feel hollow in a way. Hmm. No, those aren't wood. Those are like a plastic or something made to look like wood. So we'll see about getting these online. They might go online, they might end up in the booth. But they were also not very expensive. So I, those were on a shelf that I paid $5 for everything on. And there's a few more things that were in that shelf, including these dogs. So we have here a, I don't know. There's a dog and see, I'm thinking like wire hair terrier, but that's probably wrong. Or it could be a Scotty dog or a Yorkie. I don't know. There's a dog, it's a bell. The dog is a bell. There's that one. This one I like a lot because look at it. It's like a little trinket dish with a lid 
That's great. I like that one a lot. So that was also included for $5. Made in Taiwan, Republic of China. So we're in the 70s time frame here. Uh, keeping with the dogs, here's another, here's another one. Here we are. Really cute. Look at those eyes. Oh, this one is Inesco, Taiwan. This one says 1984, Kathy Wise, Republic of China. Very cool. And then I think that's all those kind of dog things. Then I've got these fighting chickens. Really lovely in this 1960s Japan. They're white with gold uh, relief. What's that called? Gold. It's like gold. Gold stuff on there. The shiny gold. And we have the pink roses on there. Really nice. Those, not sure where those are going to go in the booth or online yet. Then we have these left in figurines. They are not, and they're month. They have the months written on them, but they're not angels. So I traditionally always find the month angels. These are uh, little boys. So we have here a November boy. It says that on there, and he has a, a wheat and a turkey. And this one is September. He has an apple and his books. So those are really awesome. These sell individually for about $20, $25 in good shape. Well, in great shape. And they are left in. I don't know if I said that. Left in Japan. Those were in the curio cabinet. The curio cabinet that I paid $40 for everything with. And if you've been following along, you know, you know that actually. Yeah. This is a really cute dog. Love that one. Open top there. So you can, I don't know what you could do with it, but there it is. Put your phone in it. <laughs> He's cute. Really nice. It's kind of like a pottery. Heavy ceramic. Along the same lines, we've got a frog. There he is. I can imagine that in a, like by a sink. You could put your sponge in it or something. Very nice. No writing on it. There is some crazing. I don't know if that's pulling up there, but there is this micro crazing. But all in all, nice shape. Then I did get some tin cans. These were in the basement. And I just love the graphics on that one. Never dull, never dull can. It's a polisher. You can see the graphics, really lovely. So I got that one and it has the lid. Then I have a Calumet baking powder, tin. These are pretty, um, they're pretty, you can find them a lot. So, uh, and it has lots of rust. So. Uh, this one here probably go for maybe three dollars in the booth, three or four dollars. Uh, the never dull tin, about five in the booth, and then we have a flying Dutchman aromatic tin. Really cute, cute, nice looking, cool, really cool. It's a cool looking tin, and the back's in a little bit worse shape. Uh, this one probably a few dollars in the booth as well. And then we have an old judge coffee tin without the lid. So we'll put like two bucks on that in the booth. All of those tins I bought, I don't remember at this point how much they were. It was pretty small and it was a pretty small amount. So it's not a big deal. Yeah, I don't know. This is something really cool and I am so happy. I mean, it's, it's, it's a first for me to find it. It is milk glass. Oh, I hate that white things do not show up. It's white milk glass. And there's these like waves along the side here. This would have originally been painted. So what the, the detailing around here, you would have, you would have seen, but there are playing cards, uh, the little symbols. There's a heart right here in the front, a diamond on the side, club, no, spade, no. Spade and a club. Okay, so the playing cards, and you would put a deck of cards on the inside of it. It's so cool. It's from 1890 by C.F. Monroe, and this is called the Watercrest Pattern, but it's super cool. And a fully painted original one of these went for $200 online. But this one is not in perfect shape, and most of the time you do not find them in perfect shape. 
and they generally are worth about $15 to $20 based on condition. One like this, $15. Really cool. And I just truly wish you could see that, but it seems like the white's going to become a problem. But there's really cool, uh, there's really cool designs on it. Isn't, isn't that cool? It's just really neat. Yeah, for sure. I did get a Vaseline covered dish. This would house some uh, powder. <sighs> Could not think of words. A Vaseline uranium glass. Get a black light out, shine it, it'll glow. So there you are, it's depression era covered dish. This here, I expect to sell it. If I don't sell it in the booth, I might have someone who's interested in it, a subscriber, and I'm looking to get about eight to $10 out of this plus shipping. But it's really nice and vaseline glass isn't really popular right now so there's that but that's just a really nice uh jar it's just in great shape here we have a compote dish it's a lidded uh dish in the king's crown pattern thumbprint also known as and here's the little thumb prints so there's the lid and it's in a cranberry and clear cranberry glass it's uh, flashed on so this coloring is not in the glass it's sprayed on to the glass so it's not uncommon to find this kind of stuff worn away the coloring worn away but this is in great shape and either way it doesn't do very well it's worth about 10 bucks so it might end up in the booth because it's kind of heavy for shipping but it's in great shape that was also in the curio cabinet. Cowbell, that, this is cool. Green ribbon on it, it's a cowbell. No graphics to it. There's the inside. It's just all around really cool. That'll probably make its way to the booth. Offhand, I'm not sure how much cowbells go for. It's probably around $10 though, 10 to, 10 to 12. If I had to guess right now, which I do, this here is awesome and I'm glad that I got them. They are a pair of canisters, 1950s era, chrome, or yeah, like a, the shiny metal. <laughs> coffee on this one, open her up, and you put your coffee in there. It's made by Chromex and it's written there on the bottom. A big K, not Kmart. <laughs> so coffee and then tea. A pair of them. There would have originally been others involved in the set, but just the two of them together, it'll go for about 20 bucks. That's $10 a canister. Uh, and they'll probably end up in the booth, the 1950s themed booth that I have. The last item up on this table, but there is still a lot more to go because, yeah, and I'm processing it as best as I can. But all this stuff, you have to understand, it's dirty and I have to wash it. And then I have to do a little research on some of these things that I'm not as familiar with. So it takes a lot of time and I'm trying to get through it, but my goodness, I'm not complaining. Okay, I'm not. It's just that, whoops, it's just that there's just a lot of steps whenever you add the video and, you know, the video is an extra step that, yeah, just, just saying. Here we have a Thermos lunchbox, a Thermos brand lunchbox in black. These come in multiple colors. Blue is a very cool color if you can find it. Silver is a very common color. Black's also a pretty common color. And it helps if it has the uh, thermos inside of it, the actual thermos. <sighs> but there it is, it shows a lot of wear. You can still see some of the detailing right there, the kind of the triangles on it with the stripes. It was in red. These sell for roughly about 20 bucks. With the thermos in it, um, maybe 25, but the thermos is in pretty bad shape. If the thermos was in great shape, 30. Yeah, I mean, okay, on the bottom it does have lots of information we have here. What does it say? Thermos brand product, thermos division, King Sealy, Norwich, Connecticut. There you go. So, pretty awesome. These were popular in the 40s and 50s. And 60s. You know, people use these things to death and abused them. Have I done? Yep, sure are. All right, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.